Welcome to Skill Builder. I'm Robin Clevett. I'm at the Capel Build. This is another update for you. And I'm gonna start by telling you how important it is to make sure when you're setting a building out, even in the ground, you think ahead. Now, when I say think ahead, I think ahead about everything. And it might be a light position in relation to a wardrobe, and it might be a window in relation to a light position. I've formed the first of the wardrobes. These wardrobes, come through my really good connection at Cut Rights. Now, they don't make wardrobes per se, but they make all of the components. So I come up with a design, and going back to setting out, the center of this wardrobe here is in relationship to everything else. So the center of the bed, uh, the, the sockets, everything is in relation to these wardrobes. Um, the boxes themselves are all made out of an Egger product inside. It's like a linen material. It's, called, it's not linen, it's obviously um, chipboard. And the doors are by another manufacturer. They're like a high gloss. So all of these components come out of huge sheets. So like 10 by five sheets or three meters by 1.5, I think they are. And what they do is they cut them all down to size. They edge them for me. They also drill them all out as well. They've got some sophisticated drilling machines. And it all comes to me in panels. Even the drawer boxes, they all come as panels. We simply assemble it on site and fit it. So what that does, it cuts down so much time on site for me. So I've probably spent three man days assembling this and then doing all of the little bits and pieces, the scribes, all of the fillets around the outside. That's the only bit that needed decorating. We started with a double cupboard here, which hides the manifold for this side of the building here. Even that manifold was positioned to suit these cupboards. These cupboards were, were positioned to suit the layout of the building, etc. So it's really important we think ahead. You may be wondering about the cost of a product like this. So first of all, let's compare it to say someone like Sharps, if you were gonna call them in to do your bedrooms. First couple of things about it is, this is totally bespoke and there's hundreds of different colors. I know Sharps do bespoke and all the rest of it, but I would say that this is a, probably a superior, more superior product in terms of component. And the cost, I would say, is less than Sharps. It's hard to quantify unless I got them out to quote it, but I'd imagine if Sharps came out to quote this at the same level or the same quality and the fittings, it's all blum, it's all blue motion. I would say this probably would come to about three, four grand, something like that, just for this run. And I reckon that it's probably, it's probably half that if you do it component build. So as you can see, we're really busy here. We've got the floor going down. We've got the Candine going down. I've got my good friends from Berwick's in Horsham here. The whole team nearly. And um, I particularly like Candine because it's really, really hard wearing. We're out in the country. We'll be in, we'll be out. There'll be animals running through and all the rest of it. The chances are a wood floor would just get trashed. And the other problem is with a wood floor, an engineered wood floor over an area like this, you get a lot of trouble with expansion and contraction. We've got underfloor heat in here, and I wouldn't like to take the risk of an engineered wood floor in a property like this with such a big expanse, the chances are something would go wrong at some point. The other trouble with an engineered wood floor is if you've got kitchen units, island units, you really don't want to sit them on top of a engineered wood floor. It's all meant to do this the whole time. Expand, contract, expand, contract. If you trap it with weight, the chances are it's going to split, a joint's going to open up. So it's not for me. The beauty of a product like Candine is that it's super hard wearing. If you do mark or damage it, you can take a piece out and you can put a piece back in. Monday morning, 
there was nothing down. It's only Wednesday lunchtime now and they've done preparation, they've done sanding, they've done sealing, they've done latexing and now they're laying the product. It's amazing how tight they scribe everything in. It's just incredible really. The bottom bit of that frame, which started life at about 40 millimeters, we had to make sure all the screed, insulation, everything ended up at halfway up there, which shows the same margin as the plasterboard, which is a little bit on the anal side, but that's me, unfortunately. Let's talk about a little bit about expansion and contraction. So we've obviously got all the underfloor heating off. Yeah. The temperature in here is around about 10, 11 degrees, which is similar to what it's like outside. You've got a little bit of a heater in there, which you're just running up when you need it. You've also said to me, reintroduce the underfloor heating nice and slowly. That's it, you don't want to shock the floor too much. So you want to put it on about 18, 19 on the first time you use it, then just knock it up a degree a day and don't go past 27. That's the maximum for calm thing. Yeah, so we've got, every one of our stats has got a floor probe. Yeah. And each one of those stats is set to that limit that you're talking about. That's it, And that's yeah. something that we've programmed. So when you say shock the floor, you're not, what we're not expecting is we're not expecting the whole thing to, to do this, it can't, it's bonded down. And this material has been developed and engineered not to stretch. What you're ex saying is you may get an area which might push up. It's only on the first new start <laughs> up of the underfloor heating system. So when it's been off for a long period of time, like over the summer, then when you put it back on the winter, you just want to put it on gradually, you know, you don't want to turn right. it right up to 27 right. and shock the floor. From, from it being not on to go into that. And what have you seen when something when that's happened? What have you vis what have you witnessed? Or have you witnessed anything like that? It can it can cause calming to move about a little bit, yeah. 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 So you can see we've got a lot of glass here, floor to ceiling glass, and the sun is gonna come round all day long and some rooms are gonna be bathed in sun sunlight more than others. What so what effect does sunlight have on this product that you know of? It's fine as long as you use a high temperature adhesive, which we're using on yours because you've got that before heating system. Right. And that won't affect the, the floor at all, the sunlight, as long as you use that, that glue and not like pressure. So it's not about discoloration or anything like that? I've not seen have done something to that layer to stop that have they? discoloring, yeah. I've seen loads of different types of product which are similar to Candine. So there's lots of copies of Candine, I would say. What do you know about them? Any good or? There's, there's quite a few on the market. They're all LVTs, they're all luxury vinyl tiles. And uh, there's other name brands out there, but we find Candine's nice and fit so we enjoy laying it. Do you? So there's never a problem. It's all really uniform then? It is, yeah, yeah. Well, it amazed me when we were doing a little bit of setting out together and you said, you know, you were working out what the cuts would be and we're talking about areas which are 10 meters wide and it's incredible how accurate, when you butt this stuff together, how accurate it really is. It does, yeah. Because if, nice. yeah, if I was working with engineered wood, you're going to grow a little bit or you're going to lose yeah. a little bit. So, um, no, it's good. Well, I'll leave you to it. Lovely. Cheers. Thanks so much. You're welcome. And um, it's looking fantastic, mate. Cheers. Thanks a lot.